After we graduate school, most of our lives are spent in two places, in our careers and in our sleep. Why not optimize where and how we spend that time? And no, this isn't going to be a talk on where to buy your next mattress, but rather where to seek career and life fulfillment. I assume many of you, much like myself, have experienced a failure or two within your careers. And at the same time, I assume you've experienced a success or two, hopefully more of the latter. With this in mind, I say, and listen carefully, don't be afraid to fail in the career of your dreams. Be afraid to succeed in the career of your nightmares. What is she talking about? Hear that distinction again. Don't be afraid to fail in the career of your dreams. Be afraid to succeed in the career of your nightmares. Why? Because along this life journey, your past is motivating your present, which is inspiring your future. Now, some of you may have heard this before, but humans have a negative bias. Our default mode positions ourselves to register those negative events, those negative emotions first. Today, that might not seem as relevant, but earlier in human history, this makes a lot of sense. If we weren't paying attention to those negative threats, those saber-toothed tigers, it was literally a matter of life or saber-toothed tiger lunch. <laughs> well, if our negative thoughts are natural, then our positive thoughts will happen through our intentions. The intentionality of your positive thoughts will benefit you to drive fulfillment in your life's work. On the contrary of the natural negative thoughts, I have seen the natural positive thoughts play out at the end of someone's life. When all they had left in front of them was nothing left to fear. Have you ever watched a loved one live out their last days? Unfortunately, I am in the process of watching my father live out his. My father was officially diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in his early 50s. This is a man who was thriving in a vibrant, healthy life with his family and successes in his career. Parkinson's attempted to steal my father's fulfillment. And for those of you that don't know, Parkinson's is a neurological disease impacting your brain. As my father lives out his final days as a now 70-year-old man, I have watched him lose the ability to speak, to eat, and to walk. What he has left is his limited time, his heart, and his brain. But what you might not have guessed is that Parkinson's attempt to steal my father's fulfillment was unsuccessful. This is a talk through my father's lens, a man who lived a life of intentionality and, in turn, fulfillment. Reflecting on my father's journey, I see now that he's not thinking about his past failures, his past inadequacies, but rather the power of his past decisions to inspire greatness and each one of his children and grandchildren, all 
13 of us. If this is the case for all of us as we approach our final days, why not concentrate earlier in our lives to bring intention in experiencing career and life fulfillment? In my own career, I took a step back and I tried to determine what were the common themes of those living in fulfillment. Here's what I've learned. The ones living in fulfillment were the ones embracing uncertainty. The ones releasing themselves from others' expectations. They had an ability to view their past as a lens into their future. An authentic reflection in a forward force. It was in these moments that, that I created the four quadrant strategy to career fulfillment. So I stand in front of you today and I ask, do you want to bring intentionality to your future using the power of your past? I have a suggestion. Let's start today by using the four quadrant strategy. We'll analyze where you have been, where you have been successful, where you have thrived, and where you want to learn more. Because at the end of your days, you're not going to remember the moments where you were inadequate, nor will you remember the moments that you didn't care to pursue. But rather, you will remember the moments where you thrived and in turn, inspired a community around you. Now, I wholeheartedly believe in the four quadrant strategy. I believe that it is the blueprint in bringing intention and experiencing career and life fulfillment. Here's how. And you can join in if you'd like. In your bags, you have a pen. Next to my bio page in the booklet, there is a blank piece of paper. You would take your pen and draw a line down the center of the page and a line across the middle. What you have created is four squares, four quadrants. In each quadrant, I'm going to ask that you identify areas in your life where you've had accomplishments and where you've had responsibilities. On the left side of the quadrants, we're going to focus in on areas where you've thrived and where you want to learn more. So kicking us off, in that top left quadrant, I want you to identify areas in your life where you've been successful and where you have thrived. For example, my father thrived in leading organized youth soccer and basketball in my childhood community in the 80s. He instilled the fundamentals of grit, determination, and confidence in hundreds of student athletes, including me and my three sisters. Now, as we step back into the bottom left quadrant, I want you to identify areas in your life where, hey, you haven't yet been successful, but you aspire to be and desire to learn more. These are your learning opportunities. Leading organized youth sports, as some of you may be familiar, comes with its set of challenges of keeping all parties happy. The parents, the coaches, the players, the refs. My father spent countless hours committed to learning the balancing act of it all. Now, as we move to the right side, we're going to shift our attention to areas where we may or may not be knowledgeable, but certainly don't care to pursue more. In the top right quadrant, I want you to identify areas in your life where you've been successful, but don't really care to pursue it. My father led a career as a logistics manager into his early 50s, but this was priority and financial need only. His priority was his family, which he chose over working longer hours and maybe even some possible promotions. And lastly, as we step back into the bottom right quadrant, I want you to identify areas in your life where you've had responsibilities, maybe you weren't that knowledgeable in them, and certainly don't care to pursue them much more. 
Traveling for work was not an area that my father cared to pursue. And it was in those opportunities that he chose to delegate to his team when he could, saving the travel time for his family. Now, I'm a firm believer in the four quadrant exercise that I believe upon completion, you now have in your hands the power to actively examine your past and use what you've learned to guide your future with intention. The left side of the quadrants will drive where you go, while the right side of the quadrants will drive the community that you keep around you to make career and life opportunities whole. So I ask you another question. When you seek out career and life opportunities, do the majority of the responsibilities, values, and traits align more with the left side of the quadrants or the right side? If you are living out a life aligned with the left side of the quadrants, areas where you've been successful, where you've thrived, where you want to learn more, consider yourself in a great position to achieve career and life fulfillment, much like my dad. Coincidentally, paying attention to that right side is equally as important. When you view the areas where you're not interested, don't really care to to pursue much more, but might know they're still important to have as a part of your life, this will help determine who to optimize a partnering relationship with to make career and life choices come full circle. Now, I'm not a musician, but I hear in the music industry that the left brain is better at rhythm while the right brain is better at melody. They say that without rhythm, melody does not exist. Rhythm is the indispensable element. Consider yourselves the indispensable element in synchronizing career and life melody. Where you thrive and exert energy to learn will drive your career rhythm. And where you focus to delegate and build a community around you will bring the melody. All this to say, if you implement the four quadrant strategy and accept the belief that you can enable your past, both good and yes, those bad decisions, to create ripple effects in purposefully driving your future, you will bring intentionality to your core, your core career actions, your core fulfillment in your life's work. Bingo. And that life fulfillment is the underpinning that exudes from you and in turn inspires your community and your family. Imagine a society where more people chose to follow this type of intentional path. Less stress, more productivity, a few more smiles, and a generation of people inspiring a future generation to live with this intentionality. Now, if you take away nothing else from today's talk, I want to share with you these two lessons that I have learned from my father's journey. Number one, if you seek a life with intention, I believe that the four quadrant strategy can fuel opportunities to make career and life fulfillment a reality. And two, if you only have this one life to live with an unpredictable length and your final thoughts and emotions will revert back to your positive ones rather than your negative ones, then I say devote your energy to spark your past, ignite your future memories, and in turn fire up a better future for the next generations. Thank you.